This is a monstrosity, but I actually think it's pretty cool. Basically, I was trying to grow enoki mushrooms in a monotub, but for whatever reason, I accidentally inoculated it with turkey tail mycelium, and it ended up forming this brick. But this got me thinking, in what ways are mushrooms, or more specifically mycelium, actually being used for materials? There are a lot of cool things going on right now in this space, so in this video I'm going to talk about some of the companies that are actually making materials out of mushrooms, and what the future might hold for myceliated materials in general. So let's start with the very basics. What is mycelium? And probably if you're watching this channel, you know exactly what mycelium is, but it's not really common vernacular for the non-mycophile, so let's go over it really quickly. If you've ever gone walking in the woods and you pull up the moss off the forest floor, you might see some little white fibers or white threads kind of growing underneath the moss. That is mycelium. Although not scientifically accurate, you can kind of think of mycelium as the root structure of the mushroom. Threads of mycelium will grow throughout the forest floor or grow throughout a log or a substrate, absorbing nutrients and eventually forming a mushroom, which is technically called a fruiting body. Mycelium comes in all different shapes and sizes and sometimes even different colors. So depending on the species of mushroom or the conditions that it's growing in, the mycelium can look quite different. Sometimes it can be really uh, fibrous and thick, and sometimes it can be really fluffy and light and wispy, so it can really be different depending on how it's growing and what species it is. But no matter what species of mycelium that you're dealing with, it does have this binding property where it can kind of almost glue different materials together. So if you see mushrooms growing throughout a substrate, it will kind of often kind of bind everything together. And that's what you see in grain spawn, for example. I don't know if you can see here, but all the white filamentaceous mycelium is kind of binding all of these grains together and it really needs to be broken up in order to be separated. But this binding property is one of the reasons why mycelium might be so useful in terms of forming materials and making all sorts of different products. So there's definitely the potential for mycelium to replace things like plastic, like leather, and styrofoam. And although it's not necessarily a practical solution yet, there's lots of creative entrepreneurs that are exploring different ways where a fungi might replace some of these materials as an alternative. A lot of this stuff is being done by a company called Ecovative Design. And when I was looking into it, I see that they already have 23 patents on different methods and different ways that you can grow mushrooms into anything from a styrofoam replacement to a bacon replacement. When this company started, their original intention was to make a styrofoam replacement, which makes sense that they're doing different mushroom packaging. And out of all of the things that they do, this one definitely looks the simplest and the most straightforward. So from what I can tell, they have these plastic molds that they can make in all different shapes, depending on what the packaging needs to be used for. And then they just fill that with hemp in this case, or you could use any kind of organic material that mushrooms can break down. And then they inoculate that with mushroom mycelium. And from reading the patents, it looks like they just use Pleurotus ostriatus, but I'm sure there's a bunch of different strains that they're testing because you'd want it to grow fast and you'd want it to not fruit and there'd be all these very specific things. So I don't think they're just using any oyster mushroom strain, but they were using Pleurotus ostriatus at one point, which actually makes sense because it is a super tenacious uh, mushroom mycelium. It does grow really fast and it does actually bind really well. So it makes sense that they'd be using oyster mushroom for this. Now, if I didn't know anything about this and I was gonna go use some type of mushroom for packaging or other kind of brick or other kind of material, I would probably start with reishi mushroom because reishi out of all the mushroom species that I've seen is the most insanely tenacious. It grows really, really fast and really, really tough. In fact, if you ever make like a grain jar of reishi mycelium, it's almost impossible to break up those grains and actually get that uh, grain spawn out of there. So reishi is really, really tenacious. And if you're gonna try this yourself, it might be worth a try to actually use reishi or Ganoderma lucidum. One of the cooler things I saw that they do though, and something that is a lot more complicated is what they call vertical farming, or they're using what they call aerial mycelium farming technology. And basically what this is, they grow, they use a very special set of conditions to grow like this thick, marshmallowy, pure mycelium mat that can be used in all sorts of different ways. Now they don't explain the exact process on how this is done, but here's what I can glean so far on how this process actually works. First, you'd wanna start with a mycelium that is kind of naturally fluffy or has a natural tendency to form aerial mycelium. And when I say aerial mycelium, that's mycelium that grows up out of the substrate and it's just kind of one cohesive matrix of pure mycelium instead of growing down through the substrate where it'd be more of a composite matrix of mycelium in whatever substrate it happens to be growing on. So aerial mycelium is how they can get that marshmallowy layer of pure mycelium. 
So you probably need to start with a species that's really uh, good at doing that, but also you'd wanna make sure that it's grown in a super high CO2 environment that would limit it from producing fruit bodies and cause it to grow kind of straight up. So if you look at what they're doing, you can see that they're kind of in these enclosed containers and their vertical farms, and that's probably to keep a high concentration of CO2 within that growing environment. It's probably also temperature controlled, so my guess is it's a lot warmer, so that number one, the mycelium grows really fast, right, because one of the advantages of growing a material or growing a food is that you could grow it really fast instead of taking a number of months. So if it's warmer, it will grow a lot faster, and uh, it should also be you know, preventing it from fruiting if it did have a tendency to fruit. Because again, you wanna grow just the mycelium and not any fruit bodies. And finally, it's probably also grown in the dark. And again, this is just to prevent fruiting and it might allow the mycelium to grow a little faster. So this pure mycelium marshmallowy thing can be used in all sorts of different ways. And one of the ways it's used is that it's just compressed and this is how they make mushroom leather. So they'll compress it and I'm sure it's treated with other things or put through a roller to get that natural kind of leather pattern on it. But it's just this pure mycelium that's been processed and smushed and colored and whatnot to make a leather replacement, which is actually super cool. And you might be seeing this in the news a lot more. Uh, one of the brands that I was looking at was Bolt Threads and they have this uh, uh, mushroom material called Milo. And they're actually partnering up with all of these different brands to produce everything from, you know, clothing to sandals and all sorts of different shoes. So pretty neat that you can actually grow a mushroom leather. I haven't seen it myself or I haven't felt it or anything. So I don't know exactly how useful it actually is as a leather, but judging by all these other companies that are getting into it, it's probably pretty good. Now this same marshmallowy thing is also being used to just be sliced up and then squished and then you can cook it with all sorts of different spices and flavors to make a mushroom bacon. So this company, Ecovid of Design, has created this other company called Atlas, or Atlast, I don't know exactly how you pronounce it, but basically this is a company that's using uh, mycelium to produce meat alternatives and how it's different from something like a Beyond Meat or an Impossible Foods is that instead of like a ground meat type of thing, it's like a whole cut type of thing because you can cut the whole chunks of mycelium and you know they're making bacon but you can also make like chicken and it has this texture that's really similar to whole cuts of meat which is pretty neat. So the selling point for this mushroom meat is that number one, it uses way less water. So in one of the videos I was watching, the founder was saying that like a pound of pork can take up to 575 gallons of water to produce, whereas a pound of this mushroom meat only takes like one and a half gallons of water. Also, it's way quicker, right? It's gonna take a number of years to raise a cow or a pig, but this mushroom meat or this mushroom uh, replacement for meat can be grown in less than a couple of weeks. So I've never actually tried this bacon before. I do like mushrooms, so I assume I would like it, um, but who knows what it actually tastes like, but it does actually look pretty good. So it really is a blue ocean for these emerging mycelium technologies, and there are lots of interesting ways, other than what I've already talked about, that this stuff is actually being used. One of the ones I saw that kind of went super viral recently was this idea of a mushroom coffin. So it was a Dutch startup that made basically just a box that's uh, made of a degradable material, organic material, probably wood, and a mushroom mycelium, and it's used as a coffin. And the whole idea is it's much more sustainable to do that than use uh, cremation or use a, you know, a big wooden and metal box that you put in the ground that takes years and years and years to degrade, where this will degrade in a couple of months. There was another similar idea that I saw called the mushroom death suit. And this one, to be honest, I'm not sure. I don't know, it's a suit that apparently contains the spores of a mushroom. And the whole idea is that it will degrade your body and the toxins within your body uh, in the ground and it will be better for the environment. So reading right from their website, it says that it cleanses the body and soil of toxins that would otherwise seep into the environment. It delivers nutrients from the body to surrounding plant roots efficiently and it restarts life around the body faster than normal. So the pitch here is that there are actually a lot of toxins in our bodies, specifically BPA, and this suit will like kind of break those down and prevent them from seeping into the environment. But I don't know, it's hard to say because I don't know if this has actually been used before, it was more just kind of an idea. And the fact that they only use the spores and the suit, uh, I don't know, who knows? It's kind of a cool idea, but I don't know how practical it actually is. So although the mushroom material revolution seems to be booming, I'm guessing it'll probably still be a number of years before mushrooms actually replace packaging and actually replace uh, bacon and leather and all of these things or building materials or whatever the heck this thing is. Uh, but you know what, I would say it's pretty cool and keep your eyes open because there's a lot of people looking into this, a lot of startups that are using mycelium in all sorts of different cool ways. And I don't think it'll be too long before we start to see this more and more and more. So while we're all waiting for that, uh, if you are interested in the magic mushrooms and you want 
to get more mushroom content every week, be sure to hit that subscribe button and be sure to hit that like button as well to help this video and this channel mushroom. So thanks so much for watching. I'm Tony from freshcap.com and we'll see you in the next video.